Welcome back. In this segment, we're uh, going to get started with SAS. Uh, I'm going to get you acquainted uh, by giving a brief introduction to the SAS software and uh, some basic components of the working environment. And specifically, I want to get you familiar with uh, the SAS working environment in a, in a Windows operating system, help you understand the difference between editor files and SAS uh, data sets or data files and specifically go over some examples uh, of what exactly a data set is in the context of uh, the SAS software. Uh, SAS is an integrated system of software solutions according to their website that enables you to do a, a number of different things. In terms of epidemiology uh, of course, what SAS does very well and, and uh, what makes it very useful is that it can do a number of uh, very basic and very sophisticated statistical and mathematical analyses. And in addition to that, it's also a pretty powerful data entry, retrieval, management, and manipulation tool. And I would really emphasize the data manipulation uh, from an epidemiological standpoint. Oftentimes, uh, many epidemiologists get data entered in, in many different ways, uh, and it may not be through SAS, but when it comes time to bringing together many different data sets uh, across different settings and preparing them for analysis, uh, the manipulation is usually done in uh, one of very few uh, softwares in my experience, and SAS is probably one of the most common. Uh, it's a very powerful tool for uh, doing all of those basic data manipulations. There are a couple advantages and disadvantages of SAS I want to go over uh, quickly before we uh, move further. The main disadvantage of SAS, I would say, is that it's uh, one of the more expensive softwares. Um, so if you're going to be in an environment where you don't have a lot of financial support for your research, uh, SAS may not be the best option. That being said, most people can get uh, a license uh, for maybe one to two hundred dollars, uh, particularly if you're affiliated with an educational institution. Another disadvantage is that SAS takes a little bit of time to learn uh, as you're first starting out. Uh, but I think the benefits of uh, putting in that initial uh, time and effort to, to learning are that uh, it can be fairly powerful in terms of your analytical capabilities and your ability to control and manipulate uh, your data sets uh, downstream. So that brings us to some of the advantages, and I've listed them here, uh, but SAS can run on many computing platforms. I'm actually teaching this class from a Mac, even though SAS uh, is not available for Macs at this point in time. There are options, and if you have questions about using SAS on a Mac, please feel free to contact me, and I can provide you with information on that. Uh, you can start from almost any type of data. So as I said, oftentimes the uh, data from your study gets entered uh, via different mechanisms, uh, text files, uh, Excel files, access, uh, web servers, etc. And SAS can generally bring those data in fairly easily get you moving with your analysis. There are a large number of statistical procedures that SAS can, can accommodate, um, from basic descriptive procedures to complex correlated uh, data analyses, longitudinal data analyses, multi-level modeling, uh, etc. And as I said, SAS is a very powerful data management tool. Uh, it's one of the, the reasons why I tend to, to like SAS. I think after you understand how to use it, you can really control your data in a way that's not uh, easily done using other softwares. And SAS is pretty fast. It works well with large data sets, uh, in my experience, and relative to other softwares. If your coding is efficient, uh, you can work with uh, very large, uh, even genomic data sets, run analyses on a standard laptop in, in a matter of minutes. And throughout this course, we will be seeing a lot of screenshots like this. Uh, this is SAS syntax in a SAS editor file. And a lot of people ask, why use the editor file and why use syntax? 
SAS does have some menu dri driven options where you could go up to a, to a file menu, uh, something uh, like this for example, and tell SAS I want to know the mean age uh, in data set X. And SAS will do the coding for you in the background and give you some output and tell you what the mean age is. The main reason uh, that syntax is so important from my standpoint is that it dramatically increases your control and flexibility of, of the analysis. Uh, if you're going to put in the time and effort uh, to learn SAS, uh, you might as well get the most out of it. And getting the most out of it generally means understanding how to code. It also makes it very easy to document and save your analyses and share them and replicate them. Uh, with menu-driven options, you're usually in a situation where you need to go back and redo everything from scratch every time you get in to do the analysis. Uh, so this, using an editor file in SAS syntax is somewhat uh, akin to keeping a lab book. Uh, you can annotate your code as you go along, you know exactly what you did and why you did it, and you can replicate it at any time. You can provide it to journals and reviewers if they request it so they can understand better how your analyses are done. And more and more, some of the top journals are requiring things like this. They would like to see the actual SAS code and data sets to verify the analyses independently. So there are menu-driven versions of SAS available uh, that would allow you to operate in a, an environment that's much more similar to SPSS uh, or even Excel, uh, but again, you're going to lose uh, flexibility and, and efficiency. So let's get started. If you're in front of your computer now with SAS, let's go ahead and, and open the SAS program. And I'm going to jump over to, to SAS now and, and demonstrate that for you. And this is uh, going to be a common theme. Uh, most of this course is going to be taught through screenshots of the PowerPoint. And then I'll transition over into the actual SAS software and uh, demonstrate various analyses and approaches to using SAS in the actual software real-time. To get started, you just want to go down to your Start menu, uh, and you'll probably need to open up all programs, and then just find SAS. There are a lot of different options uh, that built into SAS, different versions of the program and tools that you can open. But what we want to look for is the main SAS 9.3 icon. If you're using 9.2 or 9.1, older versions of SAS, uh, that should be just fine. Uh, I'll be using 9.3. Click that and open it. I would recommend reading this uh, opening note that talks about changes to the way SAS sends output uh, to you or provides you with output from your, from your analyses. I'll go over it briefly, but uh, this is a very good way for you to get familiar with some of the changes in SAS and what your options are in terms of, of seeing the output from your results. So this is SAS. Get things configured here. back into the PowerPoint, and just a few words about the HTML uh, destination, this, this note we talked about. So in SAS 9.3, they've changed it so that output is not sent to the output window, which I will define for you shortly, but instead it's sent to what's called an HTML destination by default. Uh, so this is just a, sort of a cleaner and in some ways a more attractive way of looking at the results. But it's also slower and it takes more uh, memory and it's a bit more difficult to navigate in my experience. So I would recommend that you change this default by following these instructions. You can go to Tools, Options, Preferences from the file menu at the top of the main SAS window. Then you would want to open the Results tab. And here's a mnemonic to remember that sequence, uh, topper. T-O-P-R, Tools, Options, Preferences, Results, and then select Create Listing, uh, and unselect Create HTML. So I'm just doing that live on the in SAS right now. You 
go to Tools, Options, Preferences, and then we want to select the Results tab. And I already have Create Listing checked, so you would want this box checked, and you would want to uncheck Create HTML. Select OK. And we're back into, into SAS. So you can see there are three main windows in the SAS software. There's an editor window, a log window, and an output window. And each of these three windows within the broader SAS software corresponds to three different tabs that are located on the lower bar. And you can click on these three tabs to activate different windows depending on what it is that you need uh, to do. So the output window is essentially uh, just as you might expect. This is where the results from your analyses or from procedures that you ask SAS to run are sent to. When you want to actually see the results of a linear regression, you will click on the Output tab and look at the Output window and scroll through, and that's where your uh, results from that regression will be. The log file is simply a history of submitted statements to SAS. It includes notes about uh, what happened, any errors that SAS might have encountered, and I strongly recommend early on that you always view the log file after submitting statements to SAS to make sure that there were not errors uh, or warnings that you need to be aware of. It's also the best way early on to identify exactly where in your code that there may be some programming errors you need to address. And then finally the editor window is uh, the place where you're going to actually write your programs and tell SAS what it is you want SAS to do. Uh, you can think of the editor window as a very basic version of Microsoft Word, for example, or Pages for, for Mac users. It's just a, a text editor where you can uh, type and save information and then submit that to SAS when uh, you're ready to run analyses or, or modify and create data sets. And I would recommend that you use the enhanced editor in SAS uh, because it has essentially some color-coded options that makes it a bit easier to see when you're making errors uh, as you go through and, and write your code. To get the Enhanced Editor, you would just go up to the, to the View menu and select Enhanced Editor. And in 9.3, the default should be that you begin with an Enhanced Editor. So if you're opening 9.3, you should also already have an Enhanced Editor open. If not, you would just go up to View uh, and select Enhanced Editor. Now I want to go over a couple important points about types of data uh, files, different file types. And there are two file types that you will frequently see and be using uh, in this course. First is the editor file, which we just talked about. So you know what the editor file is now. That's where we're typing our code uh, to tell SAS how to manipulate data sets and how to run analyses. And they generally have an icon that looks like this, a little running person with a red dot in the lower right-hand corner. And the file extension for these files is .sas, .sas. So this is one way that you can quickly determine whether or not a file is a SAS editor file versus some other type of file. In contrast, uh, the other type of uh, data file that, or, or file type that we will use frequently in this class, of course, is a SAS data set. The data sets actually hold the data. We'll talk a bit more about that shortly. They have an icon that looks more like an actual data table, again with a red dot in the lower right hand corner. And the file extension for a SAS data set is .sas7bdat. This is just a screenshot from a folder on my computer uh, that holds a lot of different editor files as well as actual SAS data sets. For example, uh, here we have diet merge. This is a SAS data set. You can see the file extension is .sas7bdat, and the icon looks like a data table. Just above it, 
This is from an analysis about diabetes. It's just a SAS editor file. The name of it is Diabetes Analysis. Uh, the extension is .sas, and the icon is slightly different. So these are two different distinct uh, types of data files that you will use within SAS. The vast majority of the time, you'll never actually open uh, a data table or a data file, the .sas 7 dat files. Uh, if you were working with Excel, you might actually double-click that file and open it up and look at it. In SAS, you don't tend to do that very much. Uh, you work much more extensively with the editor files, and you'll see that as we move forward. So a little bit about uh, data sets, uh, particularly for those of you who are brand new to epidemiology uh, and have not worked with data much uh, at all. For those of you that are very experienced and you're just here to learn more about SAS specifically, uh, you can maybe skip through uh, the next couple of slides. Now, data sets are central to everything that, that we're doing in this class and, and quite often in epidemiology, at least analytically in epidemiology. SAS is a software for data management, analysis, and reporting. And uh, usually the first requirement that you will be faced with when you're interacting with SAS is that you're going to have to tell SAS where the data are located. You'll need to give SAS some sort of name and location for a SAS data set. And the SAS data set that you're specifying will have a file extension uh, like this, .sas7bdat. And this is just a visual representation of what a data set looks like. So this is very similar, similar to a, an access table or an Excel table. You might be quite familiar with those. Uh, and it's really no different in, in SAS. Data sets are simply the structure that holds the data. They're composed of rows and columns. And in uh, EpiSpeak, the rows are generally referring to observations or study participants or patients in your data set. And the columns are, are referring to variables or specific to variables in that data set. And again, a data set in SAS is really synonymous with uh, a table in Access or other relational databases. So for example, over here on the right, you can see row 1 has the first participant in the study. This participant has an ID number 1, uh, which is a variable in the data set. So every participant in this data set has a different ID number, of course. And then within each row, uh, you have different information about that participant uh, comprised of the variables that make up that row. So this participant has a weight of 61 pounds, a height of 164 uh, centimeters, and a BMI of 22.9. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the editor files. The editor files communicate with the data files. In other words, the .sas files that you create are created so that you can get information from uh, the data files, the .sas7bdat files. And remember, SAS is a language, so you're really just speaking to SAS and, and to the data sets uh, through the SAS language, and the editor file is the forum for that, for that communication. It's where you're going to write the code that will tell you how to modify data sets and provide specific outputs. Uh, from the analyses that you want to conduct, and you will spend 99% of your time, uh, or at least 90% of your time probably, working with the editor files and then quickly jumping to the output files to look at some results, capture key uh, results uh, that you're most interested in, and then usually back to the editor file to move forward with the next set of analyses based on those results. And generally, you'll almost always begin by creating a new editor file or opening an existing editor file that you had previously saved. And please remember to save these editor files frequently. SAS does not have an autosave function for the editor files uh, in comparison to a program like Microsoft Word, which often will save your document every few minutes for you, even if you forget to. SAS doesn't do that. It's not uncommon early on in learning SAS that you'll sit down for two or three hours and come up with a thousand lines of code 
and forget to save, the battery on the computer dies, crashes, and you've lost everything. So you really need to remi remind yourself to uh, save the editor files frequently. I've had some students in the first few weeks who actually put a post-it note on the corner of their computer to remind them because most of the programs you work with nowadays have auto-save functions and we don't need to, to be thinking about it so consciously. Unfortunately in SAS we still need to, to do that. You should also not open an editor file by double-clicking. In some operating environments it will work, but it really depends on the default settings of your computer. Uh, so for simplicity, at least early on, I would recommend that anytime you need to open an editor file, you do it using the file, or the menu-driven options. And I'll go through and uh, give you an example of that shortly. Well, let's give it a shot and try opening an existing editor file. To do that, you're first going to activate the editor window, and I'll give a live demonstration of this in a moment. But you activate the editor window by clicking on the editor tab, and then you go up to File, Open Program, very similar to opening a Word document or an Excel document, PowerPoint file, etc. And then you simply browse to the location on your computer where you've saved the editor file we want, and open it. For this class, you should have a file that's named uh, epic2013 underscore intro uh, or something very, very similar to that. So let's go ahead and try and open that. So I'm going to click here on this upper blue bar to make sure that I've activated my editor window. And I often like to expand the screen. so. Right now I have the full screen being the editor window. You go up to File, Open Program, and then browse to the location on your computer where you've saved the editor files for this class. So obviously this will be different for each and every one of you. Here's where I've saved mine. This is the file that I want to open, so I highlight it and then click Open. And this opens an existing editor file that I've already created and an editor file that we'll use um, uh, possibly a little bit in this segment and moving forward in the next segments. So what we just talked about was opening an existing editor file Sometimes when you're coming in and starting from scratch, just as uh, if you were opening a new Word document to start typing a paper from scratch, you need to create a brand new editor file or editor window. And the process for that is pretty straightforward. I'll show you a quick example of that here. But again, uh, you activate the editor window, which would, might often be blank, and then you simply go to File, Save As, and you save that new editor file. In a situation where you have an existing editor file already open and you want to create another one, you could go to File, New Program. And this gives you another blank editor window. So now I have the editor window down here that we opened, or the editor file that we opened a few minutes ago. And I have this new blank editor file called Editor2. So I'll just make a note here new editor file, and then to save it, you simply go to File, Save As, and choose a location to save the file. So I will navigate to a location. I'm just going to save that on my desktop for the moment. I'll name it Test Editor SAS. Save. So this is a new editor file that's now saved on the desktop of my computer. I could start creating new code in this file if I wanted. Uh, I could close it and open it at another time and start from where I left off. So the purpose of this was simply to show you how to create a new editor file. Uh, I will go over this a, a couple of different times in the early uh, lectures in this course. Uh, for now, I'm going to close it because we don't need a new editor file. 
I've already created one to help guide us through uh, in this first uh, couple of segments. Another helpful tip in terms of customizing the editor file is to add line numbers. You see I have line numbers over on the side of my editor file and that can help you jump around in the code more quickly and efficiently uh, and also communicate with other people about where in the code uh, certain commands are. Now, to add those line numbers, you would just go to uh, Tools, Options, and select Enhanced Editor. And then select the General tab. And under General Options right here, over to the right, you see there's a checkbox for Show Line Numbers. So you would just Make sure that's checked and that will make line numbers appear. And there are a number of other uh, general options that you can look at here and uh, determine whether or not you want to accept the defaults or modify them uh, to your preferences. While we're here, you could look under the Appearances uh, tab as well. And there are a number of options here in terms of the color scheme that you want uh, the editor file to be displayed in. I think the default color scheme is fairly reasonable, but what I find very helpful about this Appearance tab is you can switch the fonts. Um, I forget what the default is in SAS, but I don't believe that it's Arial, and I found uh, Arial Black to be a good uh, font that's easy to read, particularly if you're trying to present any of this uh, uh, over an LCD projector, uh, or just looking at it on your own computer screen. And then you can also change the font size. If you want to make your fonts bigger or smaller, uh, that can be done quickly and easily here. After you update uh, these various preferences to your liking, uh, just select OK, and then you're back into your editor file. Another thing that can be done if you choose to do it is to modify this toolbar. So right now you can see at the top of the screen I'm mousing over different icons on the toolbar. So these are shortcuts that um, are placed up in the, in the toolbar to help you do things a bit more quickly. There are ways to modify this if you'd like to. The one thing that I'm going to call your attention to today is the fact that the clear sign right here, this clear all symbol, is right next to the little running man. And this little running person is the button that we will click to submit code to SAS when we uh, get to that in the next segment. Now, uh, it's very unfortunate that by default these two tend to be right next to each other because if you accidentally click on the clear all, it clears your entire editor window, uh, which is problematic. Uh, if this does ever happen to you, simply hit Control Z to undo it and you'll get the uh, editor file back and then you can simply do save as and, and resave it. Uh, but oftentimes when that happens at 2 in the morning after 3 hours of coding, people aren't thinking so rationally. Uh, so a better approach would be to just modify the toolbar uh, and maybe remove this from, from the toolbar. So if you wanted to do that, uh, I have included in the notes some steps on how to modify the toolbar, but you would go to uh, Tools and then to Customize and the Customize tab, and this would allow you to modify the toolbar to your preferences. Okay, so in summary, we talked about uh, the difference between uh, editor windows, output windows, and log windows in SAS. We talked about the difference between an editor file and a SAS data set. Those are two very important uh, distinctions uh, that are, are fairly new to people when you come into a SAS working environment. And we discussed a few tips about customizing your SAS working environment to set up the preferences in a way that work better for you.